All right, YouTube. Time to get started working on the uh, Team Black Sheep Discovery Pro quadcopter build. Now, the first thing we need to do is assemble the vibration dampening system for the gimbal frame. So that should be in this box right here. And I want to go ahead while I'm doing this and retract what I said about the uh, manual not being very straightforward. For someone who has built uh, multi-rotors or even single rotor helicopters before, it's really pretty easy to follow, but it would definitely be intimidating for someone uh, who this is a first time build. So take that with a grain of salt, you know, that's why I'm making these build videos is for people that, uh, people that are fresh in the multi-rotor world. Alright, so the first pieces that we need for the vibration dampening frame are going to be this uh, piece and then there should be another piece as well where the dampening balls fit in. All right. Let's see if I can open this without scratching any of the metal. Oops, bumped the camera there. All right, so there's the there's the first piece. Now this is going to be where your roll motor mounts. Let's see, this looks like, I think that's the top piece. And this one is some kind of armature. This one is where the uh, pitch motor might mount. Or maybe it's this one. Not quite sure yet, but we're looking for two with the kind of matching holes. And those are these two right here. So they offer um, some different layout configurations for these vibration dampeners for people who might be flying uh, different cameras. Now because I'm going to be flying a GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition, what I'm going to use is, uh, let's see, on the manual they recommend four orange uh, and four uh, red. Now they also recommend for the Hero 3 four orange and four orange, so going all orange. So what, I'm, what I think I'm going to do is I might go, let's see, there's eight. I might go six orange, two red, just to test. Um, and then I'll, we can always switch them back and forth. But I'm going to set it up um, pretty similar to the way that they recommend in the manual. All right, so I just found something that uh, Trappy recommended in the instructions that was really quite cool actually. Take a servo wire, uh, wrap it around for two, two and a half turns around the uh, silicone damper. Then thread the servo wire through the hole that you're trying to get the damper through and then just pull. Watch this. If you have it wrapped properly, which I don't, <laughs> it'll pull through actually a lot easier than just doing it by hand. It's difficult, however, to keep the wire from unwrapping while you're pulling it through. So just make sure that the uh, dampener does not shift sideways or roll while you're trying to pull it through. Oh, so close. It worked great for the first one off camera. <laughs> it always does, right? There we go. Look at that. That's uh, it's easy if you wrap it properly, but getting getting the wrap that actually does anything good for you is uh, is kind of difficult. All in all, way easier than just kind of jamming the orange uh, bobbins through for sure. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish these out. The instructions say to do them for a GoPro Hero Three all in orange. I'm just going to start with that. I'm going to look for jello and if I get any, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play around with the configuration. 
But we'll see. We'll see. We'll set it up stock first, and then I will uh, post my results for that. So let me go ahead and do the stock setup, and I'll check back in with you guys as soon as I'm done. All right, so now that we've got the dampening uh, little cylinder things installed on the brackets that go onto the frame, I should show you guys how these fit into place. Now, it's a push-pull configuration, and here is the motor mount plate for the tilt axis of the gimbal. One goes on the bottom front, one goes on the top rear. Now it does not matter which one is which because these are all symmetrical parts, but I'm going to go ahead and throw these in uh, with the same procedure we use to pull the, pull the cylinders through and I will show you what it looks like when it's all finished. Alright, so not to worry, as you go along this gets a lot easier. Uh, I've started wrapping in the middle of the um, servo lead and only uh, about a half a revolution. Now just, just watch how easy this is. Pop. Just like that. Super simple. Super quick. And you'll get better at it. It's kind of an experience curve. So uh, try, try not to mess up these little silicone cylinders. But um, if you do, there are some extra orange ones in the bag um, for the Hero 3. If you have the Hero 2, you have even uh, more chances to screw up because you alternate with the orange and the red. Pop that one through. So, it's really not a huge deal. Uh, TBS was awesome about packaging uh, extra ones of these. Let's get this one all the way through and then I'll tell you about the next step. Make sure to, by the way, pull in the opposite direction that your loop is in. So, for example, if my loop is facing that way, I'm going to pull this way. That way you don't slide the loop around, you pull it through. Awesome, there we go. Push-pull configuration on the uh, roll axis mount. Let's see what the next step is. Okay. So now it looks like we are going to attach the gimbal motor, and I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, guys, so it's worth mentioning uh, the three sizes of hex drivers that we need before we start. We need a three millimeter, which is this one. We need a two millimeter, and we need a 1.5 millimeter. I have yet to run into any screws on this copter that use uh, different size wrenches. If I do, I will let you guys know as soon as I find them, but it looks like the whole vehicle is contained to three screw sizes, which is really great. Uh, I had w I wish that they would key all the screws to two millimeters, so if you need to do repairs out in the field, you don't need to drag as many um, tools with you, but uh, three, is, three is definitely acceptable. I've seen vehicles that, that even alternate between uh, SAE and metric sizes, so I'm glad that they kind of went with a standard here. Uh, I would prefer, however, if they were capable of doing one screw size. Alright guys, so now is the time to attach the gimbal motors. Now, it doesn't matter which one you use, but we're going to start with the roll axis. Now, the motors are uh, symmetrical, so it really doesn't matter. They're exactly the same. So this is the rear plate for the gimbal. Uh, that is going to be driven and this is the motor that we're going to use so it'll be mounted up just like this we're going to line up the holes and we put this together with uh, 2.5 by 6 millimeter hex screws and always 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 use a good thread lock on your screws uh, lest your quadcopter literally come apart in the air I've seen that happen and it is not pretty. I've seen a T-Rex 500 actually eat itself by throwing apart. It was pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool when it's not your helicopter. Okay. Uh, okay, so we'll just look for where the holes line up. We'll keep rotating it. And there we go. Go ahead and put them in. Always put screws in for metal to metal connections uh, in a star pattern and do not tighten them all the way. We're going to leave them a little loose 
And the reason that we're doing that is because we want to be able to shift the parts around and kind of get everything to jive together before, before we tighten everything down. We also want the torque to be evenly distributed because if the torque is not distributed evenly, what's going to happen is you're going to get, it's very likely that you're going to get stress fractures in the aluminum. Um, now that's more, that's more for bigger load carrying stuff, but I like to kind of extend that precaution even to small things like gimbal motors because there's, there's no reason not to do it and you'll thank me when you don't break anything. All right, let me see, there should, there's two more screw holes, there may or may not be two more screws. There's bearing. Okay, now that we've got the roll motor mounted here on the armature plate, the next thing that we need to do is mount it to the anti-vibration um, stationary plate. So let's, the first thing we're going to do is thread the cable up through there. There's a little notch where the cable goes. And that'll sit nice and tight in place. Now you'll see there's three holes. Each of them takes a three millimeter by four millimeter hex screw and we're going to uh, get definitely get thread locker on those. Tighten them in a star pattern. But remember, not all the way down yet. We'll tighten them down eventually, don't worry, but we're not going to do so immediately. Because if something's out of place or out of alignment, we do want to shift everything while it's kind of loose and then we can tighten it down piece by piece also to ward off stress fractures if we have the aluminum torqued in any direction it is going to stress fracture so we want to make sure that the uh, tension put on by these bolts is totally totally even in every way it'll also prevent likely prevent the motors from binding or skipping which will give you a better quality image. Okay, notice how these holes in the front are adjustable? These holes here are to balance the gimbal with the GoPro on it. Brushless gimbals are not as high torque as your old school servo gimbals. So they need to be in very good balance to work properly. So remember what I said about keeping the screws loose. That's because we're going to attempt to balance it with the GoPro on board at the end of the build and then we're just going to tighten those bad boys down. Okay, so now we're going to uh, build the top plate of the gimbal here. Let's see if we can get our hands on the top plate. Here it is. You'll notice that the top plate it's very noticeable because it has a big piece of uh, machined empty space in the top of it. Now that's there for a reason. The IMU, the inertial measurement unit, uh, is this little guy that can sit... Uh, no, that's video out. <laughs> the IMU, which stands for inertial measurement unit, is right here. It's taped to the frame. Now this is the system of gyros and accelerometers that detects the motion of your gimbal. And this is what it looks like. We need to connect the GoPro cable and the uh, IMU cable to it before we lay it down like this in the uh, top plate of the gimbal. So let's get those cables out. Those cables are the first bag that I showed you. Move everything over there so that you can see it. Okay, let's see which cables are which. It would have been real nice if these were labeled. But I'm going to guess this one is the GoPro connector. So that's going to sit in the back of your GoPro and that's going to connect up to the IMU board, which is really cool. I mean, that's got to pass through for the video switch which is quite honestly super impressive. So we'll just clip that there and just give it a nice gentle push and you'll feel it clip in place and we'll clip it into the uh, IMU also but not before we run it through the bottom. 
of the top plate the gimbal and we will clip it into the IMU here. Now this is the IMU board uh, connector. This one is going to uh, let the Alex Mos controller know where the gimbal is positioned and it's also going to uh, take the signal for the camera switch. So that's great and that will... Oh, I messed them up. <laughs> the GoPro one goes around, apparently, and this one goes through the bottom, back through the gimbal, and down to the board. So let's just rearrange these here real quick. That pops into place. I want to make sure that everything is nice and tightened up before you kind of seal this bad boy in place because it's going to be a pain to get off and redo. And let's see what screws that takes. All right, so we're going to mount the IMU to the top of the gimbal frame using some of the included uh, two and a half millimeter by six millimeter hex screws. Just go ahead and give a drop there. Always, always, always thread lock any metal to metal connection. Okay, and with the 1.5 millimeter hex driver covered in green mystery gunk, we're just going to screw all of that in place. Now these, these we can tighten up. The IMU is not going to go anywhere. We're not, that's not something we're going to have to physically adjust. We'll definitely be adjusting the software, but it's not something we're going to need to physically change really at all. And then go ahead, if you get extra um, extra thread locker on your PCB, go ahead and wipe that off. Um, I don't know if thread locker is going to be able to attack the material of the PCB, but you just want to you just want to be safe. There's no reason to leave that gunk there. All right, cool. So next step is going to be to we got the cable connected. Now we need to attach the walls and the floor of the gimbal. So the motors, the mount plate for the other motor, the pitch motor, and uh, the pitch armature as well. So those are also going to be um, those are also going to be two and a half by six. So here is the floor. Let's get everything that we need assembled. Gimbal floor. What else have we got? This looks like one wall. And the other wall. All right, it's time to assemble the gimbal parts for the uh, GoPro carrying piece. Now the way that these are gonna go together is this guy is the floor here. What I really like is there's actual channels for these pieces to fit so they're not just held by screws. They're kind of implanted in there, which is really great. I like that there's a negative space in there. Now, this slot that you can see just barely, that is for a zip tie. That is going to go up. And the flanges to attach the motor and bearing are going to go outward. So the, that'll be put in with uh, 2.5 millimeter by 6 hex screws. You will need... Uh, eight of them and a hex driver and because these are keyed uh, these are ones that you can probably not tighten all the way down but can definitely uh, handle being a lot less loose than their other than the other pieces like the motor pieces so screws insert from the bottom, just like that. And remember to uh, always do that cross pattern that we talked about. Cannot really cannot stress that enough, especially with uh, parts that are CNC'd. 
Ugh, too much caffeine. My hands are shaky. Yet again. Builder's dilemma. You know, drink enough coffee to be awake while you're building. Don't drink so much coffee that your hands shake. All right. So let's see, we're almost done. The bottom part, and then I think we can go ahead and uh, mount also the top of the gimbal with the IMU and other hardware on there. Now I've seen a lot of guys using um, cordless like screwdrivers, uh, little electric ones uh, for assembling things like this. Uh, and absolute no-no, unless you've got really accurate torque control on one of those. Absolute no-no, because you could inadvertently uh, put too much torque on it, strip the screw right out of the aluminum, and then unless you have a tap and die, you're pretty much out of luck. So, I see a lot of guys using those. They're okay on things like, well, I don't know, wood inside of uh, built-up balsa aircraft but never on CNC parts. I wouldn't even use them on plastic parts if I were you, unless you have like a self-tapping screw. You can get much finer precision with a handheld hex driver. And quite honestly, if you've got decent grip strength, you can produce the same amount of torque too. Okay, perfect. Let's see, now we gotta do the top piece after I wipe off a little of that thread locker. So let's see. Now this is, I'm gonna check the picture, but I do believe that it fits like that, but we'll see just to be sure. Okay, backwards. Very close, but backwards. So it's gonna fit like that. We want the cables to feed out of the side that has the little nubs, as opposed to the loop on the bottom. So let's go ahead and get uh, four screws in there. All right. Now always take the time to wipe off your extra thread locker. Perfect. Let's see what's next. All right, guys. So the next thing that we need to do is insert the bearing into the bearing race. Now that is done with one 12 millimeter by two and a half millimeter hex screw. So we'll just pop the bearing in there. And then all we have to do is compress the bearing race gently around the bearing. No, you don't have to do it too tight because you don't want the bearing to be squeezed out of round because that would basically ruin the bearing. So all we do is we put, a, put the screw in the side, in the notched side. take our one and a half millimeter hex and we just tighten it down. Making sure to keep that bearing nice and flush because we don't want it to slip. We want it to be nice, nice and true, perfectly round. We don't want to squeeze it oval shaped. So there we go. We do not have to really clamp this down hard. Just maybe a quarter of a turn after you feel the resistance on it. And that is plenty. I can squeeze on that really good and it's not going to come out. So go ahead and, especially on the bearing, because I don't know how the thread locker interacts with the bearing grease, is just make sure that all of your thread locker is off of that assembly. All right. Good stuff. All right. Now let's attach the bearing race assembly to the long side of the arm here like this. We're gonna go ahead and tighten that down with the 2.5 by six millimeter uh, hex screws. Excellent. Now let's take the other piece of the gimbal frame, the pitch motor mount, and let's go ahead and attach the pitch motor to the pitch motor mount with the three by four millimeter hex screws, and we should have four of them left, which we do. OK. 
Okay. So it looks like, because we've got the indentation there, that it's going to fit on the short side like this. And we're going to have the motor on the outside and the screws will be inserted flush down into here. So let's go ahead and make that happen. Now the second motor shaft should face inward. Like this, line your holes up. And let's pass the motor's cable through this channel here. And I'll show you why in a minute. So let's go ahead and get that tightened down. Remember, always, always, always get your uh, thread lock on here. You'll thank me when your quad doesn't fall apart in the air. Awesome. Now, Mercury Adhesives, I know, makes some kind of waxy thread locker that's more put on more like a pencil than a liquid, and I might have to get in on that because this liquid is starting to really irritate, irritate me. Okay. Next thing we got to do is we got to position this thing on the short arm. All right. And there's a notch here in the little short arm. So that's okay to pass the cable through. Do not pinch the cable. But we won't because there is a nice channel there to take care of it. Ah, I hate it when that happens. Perfect. All right, what's next? Okay, now central frame housing is going to go in place. Now, you'll notice that the um, little hole here is going to fit onto the um, onto the gimbal motor. Now this is why we have to keep the pieces loose because in order to get these to fit we're gonna have to extend this arm outward. So we'll loosen, loosen its screws a little bit on the arm with the bearing. Alright, now that'll just kinda pop into place with gentle pressure. There we go. And then we'll just go ahead and tighten these back down. Oops. Okay, and the next step is going to be to secure the motor shaft in there because right now the motor shaft is not uh, firmly attached to the gimbal frame. So the way that we're going to do that is two grub screws. And then what we're going to have to make sure of is that the flat spot on the motor shaft is attached to one of those grub screws. But wait a second. Something's backwards here. Something's definitely backwards because this is showing um, the, this part of the frame facing forward. And I might have just thrown that in backwards. We'll take a look at it. We'll take a look at the exploded view. All right, guys. So take a good look at the gimbal uh, where it sits right now. We've got our GoPro cable right here. We've got our IMU cable here. Um, this is going to be the roll motor cable. It's going to be the pitch motor cable. And the loop on the bottom should be in front for the GoPro strap. 
and the top plate should look like this. You should have your U channel here and your IMU right there. I had these uh, just turned 180 degrees. It happens. I'm, I'm a dyslexic, so I tend to flip designs around in my head uh, to better visualize how things fit together, which is super helpful, but you got to be pretty disciplined if you're like me to keep from flipping them the wrong direction and then building them that way. So I'll give you a couple more seconds to take a really good look at the way this gimbal is put together before we continue. Okay, next step is going to be to go ahead and take the grub screws, which are going to be these guys. I believe that those are uh, six millimeter, they're two millimeter by six, and this is a 0.9 millimeter Allen key that we put them in with, and we'll just grab the grub screw, slot the Allen key into it, make sure that the grub screw is hitting the flat spot on that gimbal motor. Always, 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 or it'll slip past the grub screw. And I'm going to put that in most of the way before I dab just a tiny bit of thread locker on it. Make sure to keep it aligned with the motor shaft because the motor is very easy to move and to get out of position. All right, now I can feel that grub screw nice and seated down. So let's rotate the gimbal 180 to get to the other grub screw. Same procedure. Very, very delicate work. Very easy to drop the Allen key, so don't lose it. Because I've, I don't think I've ever seen a 0.9 millimeter hex wrench uh, sold anywhere. It's a very, very uncommon size. I've seen 0.47s sold, which is pretty weird, but I've never seen a 0.9. Uh, now there it is. That's all set to go. And I believe but that is the end of the work that we need to do on the gimbal, but I'll need to uh, check that out. All right, so the gimbal frame is totally assembled. Now the only thing that we need to do is we need to do a little bit of cable management here, uh, wrapping this, these cables out of the frame so that they don't get tangled. And I'm going to go get a zip tie, and I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Okay, final step before the gimbal is done. Now, you'll see that there's a big hole in the bearing right there. I don't know if you can see that easily on the camera, but we're going to take the cable, run it through that hole. We might need to remove the pins from the block. I sure hope not. That would be incredibly annoying. Or we could maybe turn it sideways. Oh man, that's a tight fit. Okay, maybe push it through with a wrench. There we go. That's better. Okay. So, let's see here. How does that go through? Ah, right like this. So we go through there. And then we go back through here. And then we loosen up these screws. And it goes through that nice channel in the frame. That's really cool, integrating these channels for the wires. Definitely impressed by that feature. So all we got to do is pop that up a little bit, pop it back down. And then go ahead and put the screws back in place. Okay, awesome. Now, make sure that there's no 
um, piece of heat shrink right here. We're going to go and take a zip tie, wrap it around, and zip tie this bad boy in place. But first we want to get all the slack out of it so that it fits real well in that corner. And then just go ahead and take a knife or a pair of pliers or whatever, whatever you got on hand, and cut that zip tie off as flush as you can. Perfect. Okay, next, I think there's one, is there another spot for a zip tie? Let's see. Let's push this back through this hole, which was apparently what it was designed for. All right, and these holes here in the frame, these are also for zip ties. So we'll go ahead and put some zip ties through there. Okay, and then the second one is going to go right there. There we go. Okay, let's cut these off. Making sure, making, being really careful not to nick the wiring. or myself, but hey, at least I grow back. The gimbal doesn't. There we go. Okay, so let's take this wire here. There's a zip tie place for that one too, before we feed it through this hole right here. Okay, there's that, and then this one goes through the same hole, but on its own side. Okay, now let's get the, yet another zip tie. And just put it through this side. Not much to, uh, not, not really a highly technical aspect of building this, but hey, it keeps the wiring neat. It keeps things from getting tugged out of place, which is always good. Okay, zipped all the way down. And let's just finish cutting this zip tie. And I believe that that's it. That's all we need to do for the gimbal. But it looks like I might have to move this zip tie around so it doesn't bind. 
Yeah, those might bind. Thinking, thinking about uh, changing their position. We'll see. When I go to install it, I might need to change their position and get the, the head part to face inward. But until then, that is the end of the gimbal frame. And I'll show you guys the rest of the frame construction uh, in the next video. So until then, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.